Sandeep, uh, thank you for joining us in this series, Startup Cafe, and welcome. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your role, and your company. Uh, Michael, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I work as a CTO of Games 24-7. Uh, we are India's largest Rummy operator. Rummy in India is a real money game. It's a game of skills by Courts of Law. And uh, uh, we are, at this point in time, uh, diversifying into a lot of other games. We've recently launched a fantasy cricket product as well. And uh, besides that, we have a bunch of free-to-play games that we are working on. And we've created a new studio to essentially have a lot of new titles that get rolled out over the next 18 to 24 months. Why gaming now in India? And like, it seems like there's a trend um, where some companies are getting very big very quickly. The history of gaming over the years, uh, across the world, uh, the whole console and PC gaming passed India by completely. Oh really? Okay. And India went to mobile gaming straight off the bat. Right. And with smartphone penetration getting deeper and deeper as, as the prices of smartphones start to fall, and Indian middle class having enough time on their hands, we're seeing an explosive growth in, in the field of mobile gaming. And as CTO, um, are you looking at sort of, you know, efficiency, redundancy, speed, um, scaling, all those things, and, and how are you making that possible? Um, so I think uh, there are some key strategic decisions that, that we had to take um, as we start towards this mission of diversifying our product portfolio. The, f the first one was actually migrate to the cloud. Right. Now, when I came in, we, we were hosted on a data center provider, and the first thing that, that I did once I came in was migrate to AWS. And we've seen, as our growth has um, uh, been phenomenal, we've seen that has uh, reaped a lot of uh, rewards for us, just because of the fact that we used to get hit by things such as finite hardware capacity in a data center. Now, I don't have to worry about that. Um, I have almost, you know, the way I think of uh, our infrastructure today is it can scale to any kind of limits. What are you leveraging and what can we learn from what you're doing and making it work? AWS has a managed service called Textract. Now if, for example, I want to do KYC, which is Know Your Customer Identification, yeah. instead of me having to write uh, using, you know, OCR kind of software, my own microservices, I just hand it off to AWS, and AWS has given me a managed offering where on a per document basis, I pay them a certain amount. In terms of scalability and the availability of the infrastructure, I don't have to worry about it. Have there been any, you know, disastrous situations or near disastrous situations that you fixed? And what have you learned along the way in that sort of 18 month, just massive growth period? I'd be lying if I didn't say we, didn't, we haven't had any outages. Uh, there have been a couple of times when we had an outage, one of them was actually on the previous data center provider. That was just because we ran out of the switching capacity in the data center, that, the part of the data center that we had rented from them. Right. And so once we moved to AWS, those type of issues have never come. And, and when you're thinking about your team and the culture of, of your engineering staff or you know, team, how do you build that into what they do? Like, and, and how do you find that in people? Is it something that people just know inherently or it, does it have to be learned? You've got a team of experienced, not so experienced and completely fresh guys. Right. So what you want to do is build a culture of sort of mentorship across the organization. And so some of the senior people in the organization are, are designated to be reviewing every design that is com coming through to them. And so the way that works is we've got you know, designated architects who are look, reviewing pretty much everything, every design that's happening for a new microservice. By that, what, what happens is you're allowing a new guy to actually think and cook up a design by himself and then get it reviewed. And when he gets it reviewed, he will know if he missed out on some of the so-called non-functional facets of the software. For people who are CTOs or want to be CTOs at startups, like what advice do you have for them? If there's one learning I've had is you want to try and embrace new technology whenever you're taking something new up, even if you haven't worked on it in the past. Get out of, out of your comfort zone. Embrace the new technology. You'll find the nuances that will help you become a master of the art. Well, Sandeep, I want to thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I'm going to try my hand at some games of skill and uh, see if I can do some, some winning for myself. Thank you so much, Michael. It's a pleasure.